Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at so how to solve trig equations, more specifically when we need to change the domain. Now this is uh, the second video of a three video series. If you haven't uh, watched my previous video, I highly suggest you take a look at that because the process I am about to use is very similar to the process I've used in those videos. So in that previous video, I take a look at um, just some basic examples and in the next video of the of this three p three parts th series, I'll be looking at some harder examples. Okay, some harder trig equation examples. So let's begin with this sort of stuff. So what we're going to come across is something like this, where we're being asked to solve that two sine two x minus one equals zero. Okay, and this is for the domain from zero to three sixty. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is basically just make sine 2x the subject. So we're going to add over the 1 on both sides to get sine 2x equals 1. And we're going to divide by this 2 here to get sine 2x equals 1 half. Okay. So once we're at this stage, we should notice that we have a 2x here. Okay. And if we're going to solve it, you know, in a similar manner to what we've done previously, uh, we're probably, you know, going to get an invalid answer. So a common mistake, and I'll make a note, do not do this, okay? Do not do this. A common mistake is to find the reference angle, which is, they go 2x is equal to the inverse sine of a half, and they say 2x is equal to 30 degrees, and that means x is equal to 15 degrees, and then we say that's our reference angle, okay? This is incorrect, okay? Do not do this, okay? This is wrong. What we need to do is, well, we need to, first of all, from sine 2x, we do need to investigate that 2x is equal to the inverse sine of a half, okay? and then we get 2x is equal to 30 degrees, okay? And we leave it like that. We leave it as it is. So what I'm gonna say though, is let u equal 2x, okay? And then therefore u is equal to 30 degrees. And this is what I'm going to be calling my reference angle, okay? Now, once we're at this stage, um, we got to be a bit careful with how we're defining our domain. So uh, the domain right now is defined from 0 to 360, and this is for x, okay? But I want it for u, which is 2x. So what we got to do here is we, go, we have to um, basically make a 2x in there. So, and what did we do from this to there? We just multiplied by 2. So that means we need to multiply 0 by 2, which just gets us 0 degrees again. And we need to multiply 360 degrees by 2, which is going to be 720 degrees. Okay, and what do we know about 2x? 2x is just u. So our domain for u is from 0 to 720 degrees. Okay, and so now we're going to solve this as a trig equation in terms of u. All right, um, and, and the rest of it is... Uh, the rest of the process is uh, kind of mimics uh, what we were looking at in the previous video, although one thing does change slightly at the very end. Okay, so keeping in mind, I'm now solving my domain from 0 to 720, and I've got u is th 30 degrees, and that's my reference angle. So uh, then we make the statement. Um, so, sorry, over here, this is sine 2x equals a half, so we can say sine of u equals a half, okay? And what we notice, because 2x is u, and then what we notice is that it's positive. So when is sine u positive? So we say, but sine u is positive or greater than zero in the uh, first and second quadrant. So then we say, therefore, u is equal to 30 degrees, because that's defined in the first quadrant. It's just theta. And in the second quadrant, it's going to be 180 minus theta, which is just 180 degrees minus 
30 degrees. Okay, and this isn't exactly everything that we need to do. Okay, so we, we are missing one tiny detail, and that's the domain's not no longer from 0 to 360, it's from 0 to 720. So we're going around the unit circle twice. Okay, and that then means that uh, we can have um, 360 degrees more than these, okay? And, and to make sense of this, let's consider this um, like an axis. And let's consider an angle, let's say in the second quadrant, okay? So in the second quadrant, we have some sort of angle, which is this, okay? And we're relating it in terms of some acute angle, theta, which is going to be our reference angle, which in this case is 30. And we, we can say, we, well, we know this is 180 minus theta, okay? But let's say we wanted to go around the circle once and then go into the second quadrant. So that would be 360 degrees plus 180 degrees minus theta, okay? Which would end up just being 360 plus 180 is 540, so it would be 540 degrees minus theta, okay? So that's how we're going to define angles when we go around twice in the second quadrant. And in the first quadrant, it's just going to be 360 degrees plus theta, okay? So ordinary, normally, what do we define angles in the first quadrant as? And that's just theta. What do we define angles in the second quadrant as? And that's 180 minus theta. And to go around in uh, one revolution, we just add 360 to both of these, okay? And then, so then 180 plus 360 gets you 540, and then minus theta, all right? So we're going to have some more solutions, okay? We're going to have some more solutions over here. So we're going to have um, 540 minus theta, uh, which is, actually, I just went straight to the second quadrant. I should have done. It's going to be uh, theta, or 360 plus theta, so 360 degrees plus 30. And that's for the first quadrant. And then for the second quadrant, it's going to be 540 degrees uh, minus theta, which is 30 degrees. All right. So then we just basically simplify these. And what we have is that u is equal to 30 degrees from here. This 180 minus 30 is 150. 360 plus 30 is 390. And 540 minus uh, 30 is 510. Okay. Now this is for u. But what do we need to solve for? We actually need to solve for x, okay? We need to solve for x. But what did we say u was? Well, we said u was equal to 2x. So if we're saying u is equal to all these things, that just means 2x is equal to all of these things, all right? And now we need to solve for x, okay? Uh, and how do we do that? Well, we're just going to divide everything by 2. So this is the final line where we divide everything by 2, and so that's going to be, so 30 divided by 2 is 15 degrees. 150 divided by 2 gets you 75 degrees. 390 divided by 2 gets you 195 degrees. And 510 divided by 2 gets you 255 degrees. Okay. And hopefully what we can see is um, that we have, all these solutions of x, which are between 0 to 360, okay? But if we divide up here, if we actually did our reference angle as 15 degrees, and we, and we divided it by 2 like we did, we would miss solutions, okay? And I'm not going to go through how that would actually work, but um, uh, hopefully you can realize that... These, this is all the solutions from 0 to 360, and we could only get that if we didn't divide by 2 for our reference angle. So what I did was just let u be equal to that 2x, and essentially we just solved for u, and it wasn't until the very, or like the second last line where we said that u was finally equal to 2x, and then it was in the very last line where then we could only divide, all right? So we've got one more example. And it's this one over here, where we need to solve 
sine of x minus 250 is equal to root 3 on 2 from 0 to 360 degrees. So same thing, find your reference angle. And so x minus 250 degrees is equal to inverse sine of root 3 on 2. And so that x minus 250 degrees is equal to um, uh, 60 degrees. Okay. Now, yet again, a common mistake is adding over the 250. Likewise, up here, we don't touch this angle. Okay, so this 30 degrees that we found by inversing the sine of a half, we didn't divide by 2. We didn't manipulate it in any way. So by a similar reasoning, we're not going to manipulate this 60. Okay, we're going to keep it like that. And so I'm going to say, let u equal x minus 250 degrees. Uh, therefore, u is equal to 60, okay? And like we did in the previous question, now we've got to define u, uh, de define a domain for u. So what, we, what we're going to do um, is because u is equal to x minus 250, we're going to subtract 250 from the x, okay? So x minus 250 degrees. And in doing so, uh, well, we've got to subtract 250 on either side of the inequality. So 0 minus 250 is just two, negative 250 degrees. And 360 minus 250 is going to be 110 degrees. And we know u is equal to x minus 250. So that means negative 250 degrees is less than or equal to u, which is less than or equal to 110. So now this is our new domain for u. Okay, um, so then same process from here on. Uh, we can change this equation in terms of u, so we can say it is just uh, sine u equals root 3 on 2, and root 3 on 2 is positive, so then we make the statement, but sine u is greater than 0 in the, so where is sine u, where is sine uh, positive, and that's in the first and second quadrant. Um, therefore, u is equal to. So it's equal to, well, in the first quadrant, it's going to be 60 degrees. Then in the second quadrant, it's going to be 180 degrees minus 60 degrees for 180 minus theta. Okay? And remember, our domain is from negative 250 to positive 110. So that means we deal with some negative angles as well. So we can go backwards in the unit circle. Okay? And the question is, well, where does negative, like how far back is negative 250 degrees? So um, does it um, eat into the first and second quadrant? And the answer is, is yes, to put it simply. And the reason why is, remember, negative angles we read... Um, uh, clockwise, okay, so negative two, 250, so this is, if we start here, and we go here, that's negative 90 degrees, this, and then we go even further, that's negative 180, and go even further, that's negative 270 degrees, and what we notice is that negative 250 is going to be somewhere in between here, maybe about there, which indeed does lie in the second quadrant, and because sine u is greater than zero in the second quadrant, we can uh, identify an angle in here. So the question is, well, what's that going to be equal to? And it's going to be equal to negative 180 minus theta, okay? Which is, uh, so negative 180 minus 60, okay? So negative 180 degrees minus 60. Alternatively, if you want to think about it, you, you could do the second quadrant as per normal, so 180 minus theta, and then subtract 360 degrees. Okay, I've gone through a similar example like this uh, when we deal with the negative quadrants in my previous video. So if you're unsure on you know how to deal with that, make sure you take a look there. So then we kind of just um, solve for these. So that's going to be 60 degrees. This is going to be 120 degrees, and then this over here is going to be negative 240. Okay, so if we just want to order them in ascending order, we got negative 240 degrees, 60 degrees. 120 degrees, okay? However, what we have is this 120 degrees here, which, remember, this is for u. So u is this, 
u is that, and then u are all of these angles here. And we're saying u is equal to 120 degrees, which is bigger than our domain of what u could be. Okay, so it's bigger than 110. So that means it's an invalid solution. We can't have this solution in there. So we make a statement, but negative uh, 250 degrees is less than or equal to u, it's less than or equal to 1110. Um, therefore, u is just simply equal to negative 240 degrees and 60 degrees. And we just kind of get rid of that 120. And then we got to remember that, that that we're actually solving for x, okay? And that u was equal to x minus 250 up here. So therefore, um, x minus 250 degrees is equal to negative 240 degrees, 60 degrees. And uh, finally, we can then add 250. So by adding 250 to negative 240, that will get us to uh, just 10 degrees. And then adding that, adding 250 to 60 gets us 310 degrees. Okay, and there are solutions for x which do indeed lie between 0 to 360. Okay, so that's the, the basics in terms of how to change the domain. Okay, they're the only two examples that we'll look at for this lesson. Um, so in the next and the, the next and final part of this, you know, three-part series for how to solve these trig equations, I'm going to be looking at uh, some harder examples, okay? So mixing in some trigonometric identities and factorization amongst these equations. So uh, I do highly suggest you take a look at that. Um, and yeah, I'll leave you guys with that. Enjoy.